So I'm starting another project and it's a built-in. It's gonna look pretty similar to this. This one's kind of inset in the wall. The one that I'm building is gonna be um, coming out from the wall and but still framing a fireplace with these curved bookcases, display cases, and there might be an added shelf. Um, the customer hasn't fully decided on that yet. And even though I've done a couple videos for built-ins, I'm going to be filming parts of this one because I'm going to be building things I haven't filmed before. So the base cabinets for this built-in, usually the cabinets I make are not standard cabinet size, but they want these to be standard cabinet size. So each built-in is going to be uh, 64 inches across, which means they'll each be 32 inches. The face frames I'm making are going to be 32 inches, and the cabinets are going to come up to 36 inches with the top, which is standard cabinet size. The main difference between these cabinets and cabinets you'd put in your kitchen is I'm not having a toe kick. Instead, I'm going to have a frame that these sit on that will be covered with molding that matches the existing room. And my top is only th going to be three quarter inch plywood instead of most top standards are going to be an inch and a half, an inch and three eighths. So I'm going to film making these cabinets because I'm going to make them a little bit differently than I usually make cabinets because the cabinets I've been making for these built-ins are almost more like bookcases themselves. They're big um, carcass frames. I went to the store this morning and I got some birch veneer plywood, which is how I start most of these cabinet builds. And I'm going to be cutting it into eight sides since there's two sets and two sets of cabinets eight sides are going to be 17 and a quarter. The other main difference is these aren't 24 inches deep. These are only going to be 18 inch deep cabinets, but um, changing little measurements like that does not change how you would build these. So 17 and a quarter by 32 and a quarter. So since mine are a little different and I have that 17 and a quarter by 32 and a quarter, the 17 and a quarter is because to get, to get that 18 inch depth, I'm going to be having a three quarter inch face frame attached to the front of these. If you want to make these as regular cabinets, your sides are probably going to be more like 34 and a half to allow for that inch and a half top by 23 and a quarter, which if you put a face frame on it will give you 24 inches. So like most of my builds that use plywood, I start out by piecing out the sheets and you could get these cut down in the store. I prefer not to just because those machines aren't super accurate and your pieces sometimes don't come out the right size. It's easier to just cut this down outside my shop and I'm just cutting it into chunks and then cutting those chunks into the proper sizes for my shelf. And I piece out this plywood so that the pieces I'm left with can be used for other parts of the cabinet. Sometimes it takes a little time to figure out the best way to cut up those four by eight sheets to get the most out of it, but it's worth spending the time because if you calculate it wrong, you could actually waste a ton of wood. that I have all these trimmed to the correct width I just have to cut them to the correct height and I cut them about a quarter inch long just because that circular saw it's not going to give you as clean of a cut as this blade I have in my table saw so the easiest way for me to cross cut this stuff because my fence doesn't go um, past I think 28 marked on these boards and drew a straight line where that cut has to be and I put my cross cutting sled in here and I could just trim the tops of all of these boards. So out of those two pieces of plywood I now have eight identical pieces that will make up my cabinet sides. So now it's time to put a dado on the bottom of this cabinet. And that dado is going to receive the bottom of the cabinet and I'm going to be cutting the bottom of the cabinet after out of those leftover pieces of ply after I cut these dados. And then I did a couple test pieces on a, a, uh, some scrap plywood because if these grooves are too tight you're gonna have to recut them and if they're too loose your cabinet just it's so much easier to glue it together if everything's nice and tight and it makes for a stronger cabinet. So when I finally got the right test piece you could see how nice and snugly that fits on there.
so now what I'm going to do is I offset this by a half inch. So this is going to cut a half inch up a dado that is 11 30 seconds. And on this plywood, this is a really nice grade of plywood. Usually most plywood has an A side and a B side. This stuff, I if they if it does, it's very well hidden because it's, both of them feel good and look good. But if you have a cheaper grade plywood or an A side, B side plywood, most likely whatever you're making the outside of it especially with these built-ins with cabinets they're going to be sitting next to something else you're never going to see them so put the a side on the same side you're cutting your dado because that will be the inside of your cabinet so i'm just going to run all eight of these pieces through If you were making these as traditional cabinets before you cut this dado you would cut a three and a half by three inch um, little notch out of here and that would have been your toe kick and then your dado would have went above there since i don't have a toe kick i'm using the thickness of the frame i'm going to be leveling onto the floor i didn't have to do that but that's really only the main difference uh, between these and more traditional style cabinets. So yours would just be longer with this toe kick cut out of the bottom. So with that dado cut out, the main difference between this and some of my other uh, built-ins where they're more like solid sided cabinets, these ones are only going to have two, two and a half inch by the same thickness of your plywood stretchers on the top connecting these parts whereas the solid the bottom will be solid that's going to be a lot less material to use and it will still be sturdy there's actually going to be another stretcher on the back side but i'm not going to put that on or cut it until this cabinet's almost fully assembled and those i'll probably attach with pocket hole screws these I want to notch out some dados and when you notch out dados obviously it's going to be a rounded edge not a square edge so you're going to have to go back through and chisel some stuff out but I you can get away with butt jointing and screwing cabinets like this you can get away with pocket hole screwing cabinets like this those aren't terrible joinery techniques I just prefer dados I find them to be really sturdy really rigid it's easy to square stuff up if you cut all the parts right and another big reason I like to use dados is because in my shop it's so small I'm constantly moving parts around and if you're just attaching stuff with pocket hole screws and I'm taking it in and out of my shop five times I'm transferring it to the customer it's just there's a lot of racking and bending that could go on if you're just using screws so I originally was thinking of cutting these on my radial arm saw, but I have my dado stack in there, everything set up, the depth set up. I think I'm going to make a couple marks on my fence to give me a visual of when to lift and lower this panel. And I'm just going to notch out these edges using my stack. I'm going to put a uh, sacrificial fence on there. Since these are at the edge, you don't want to cut into your fence. Test cut these two pieces on my actual piece. And you could see if you cut far enough, you won't have much to chisel. And this little groove is not going to affect the stability of your cabinet. Those little grooves on either side there. So you're just cutting out a little bit. So I put my sacrificial fence in here. Everything, the depth of this, I kept the same and I moved it so it cuts the thickness of a piece of plywood. Then what I did was I marked little notches on the back side of where that dado has to come to. So that if I run it through here, about halfway through is where I want it. I put a piece of tape, which tells me once the front of this hits that tape, I can lift it off the blade. Then I did the same thing for the back side. I could slide this up against my fence, line my piece up with the back side of this tape with the front of my thing, lower it, and then slide it through the rest of the way to get those cuts. So I'm going to go through and put those cuts on all my pieces.
With all those grooves for my stretchers cut, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have my sacrificial fence set up with my dado stack and cut the rabbits on the back side of these cabinets, which is where the back will fit into. It'll be a groove on the back side of the cabinets. So I move that dado stack and put it down to a quarter of an inch. The plywood I'm using is a little bit thinner than that, but this is my stack of sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run four of these through with the dado first and then run four of them through with the groove first. That way you won't have eight identical pieces. You'll have four and four because on your sides your dados have to your rabbits on the back have to be on the opposite sides. With all of my pieces cut, I can now start cutting the bottom shelf and the two stretchers for these cabinets. Now the nice thing about keeping the depth consistent for all these pieces are, is now I'm going to cut the bottoms and the tops at the same width. Now since you have that rabbit in the back, this bottom shelf is only going to come to 17 and a sixteenth because you don't want it to interfere with the rabbit in the back. Now I want my cabinets to be 31 and a half. This dado is about 3 eighths inches deep which gives me a leftover of about 5 sixteenths. So 5 sixteenths plus 5 sixteenths because there's two sides is 5 eighths which means um, the size for all of these is going to be cut at 30 and 7 eighths. So I have those two chunks left over from my plywood that I could rip down to size 17 and a 16th by 30 and 7 eighths for my four bottom shelves. And then I have this leftover piece that I ripped off the, the plywood in the beginning and I can mark over 30 and 7 eighths and rip it into two sections and that should give me eight uh, strips for all of my stretchers. So I have one more thing I'm going to do to all my pieces. I have everything stacked up, my bottoms, um, my stretchers, and my eight sides. And that is I'm going to rip some grooves into all these because the way I prefer to attach my face frames is with splines. So what I do is I put a ripping blade in there. It's about three-eighths of an inch up. And I use the scrap piece of ply to gauge where I want that. And the splines I'm going to be using is 3 16 inch masonite. So since this blade is only going to cut an eighth inch groove, I actually uh, set it a little off center of this ply so you could slide it through, flip it around, slide it through again, and then it gives you a perfect groove. for sliding that spline in. Then you can make a similar groove on your face frames and that's how you can attach them. This might seem like a little more work up front, but I think it expedites the process of attaching the face frames because I usually don't even put uh, pocket hole screws in these. I just cut the pieces and attach them with the splines and glue my corners as well and they're super solid. Um, if this seems like a little bit too much work for what you want to do, you could easily make your face frames with pocket hole screws, especially on this sort of design, these base cabinets, because you're, you're basically just going to have a square face frame. It will be really easy to make. There's no um, uh, vertical members or anything like that. So I'm just going to slide all these pieces through the front side of them, not the back side.
I cut all my splines and I mocked one of these up to make sure all of my pieces fit. And you can see those splines are going to be facing towards the front so you can attach your face frame. My bottom shelf fits perfectly in my dados. Now if you're doing the one with the toe kick, your, your shelves are going to be a little bit longer and then you could add your toe kick afterwards. And then my two stretchers, the one in the back, obviously I didn't have to cut splines into, and the one in the front.